Hi, I'm George Crump, Lead Angel Storage Switzerland. You know, as we talk to organizations today, there's three big initiatives that they're concerned with, cloud, containers, and copy data. Joining me on the light board today to help discuss that is uh, Jason Brown from Actifio. Jason, thanks for joining us today. Hey, George. So let's talk about these three uh, initiatives, if you will, and, and how you guys are helping people do it with your new uh, 10C release. Sure, so Actifio 10C, people wonder what the C stands for. Well, it stands for cloud, containers, and copy data. And what we've done is essentially extend our already unique capabilities when it comes to cloud, containers, and copy data. So okay. it's really, it's a pretty cool release. All right, let's let's uh, go through the diagram sure. you have here. So for cloud specifically, we know obviously that a lot of customers want to use cloud, but they may struggle to understand how or why to use it. So if you want to manage copies of data for backup recovery, test data management, whatever it may be, Actifio really helps with that. And what we've done in 10C is extend what we already do today. So today, we can obviously write from on-prem to object storage. We also can protect cloud-native VMs in the same cloud, a different cloud region, or another cloud vendor, for example. So that would be like from, you could do from Google to Amazon, or Amazon to Azure, or something like Correct. that. Correct, okay. absolutely. Makes sense. So we've had these capabilities for a while, and they've been great for customers. In 10C, what we've done is we've extended it by a few things. So first and foremost, we're able to leverage, if you have an on-prem data domain, as an object target. Okay. Which is pretty neat, because a lot of customers obviously have purchased data domains in the past, and they'd probably like to use that, that, that was the storage that's there for their backups. So yeah, it's that. some cost. You might as well take advantage of it, right? Right, exactly. What we've also done in the release is be able to essentially use an intelligent read-write cache, okay. not only on-premises, which we've had for a little while, but in the cloud as well, where if you wanted to spin up copies of your data for whatever it may be, what we can do is you know, because of cloud egress charges and things like that, be able to reduce those by having this cache here to essentially just bring back what's needed. I think that's really that. important. So what you're doing here is instead of me copying, let's say this is Amazon, that's EBS, instead of me copying the entire thing to EBS, you're just putting this cache in place and it's SSD based, right? It is. Okay, and so then, I, I access it through through this way and that way, you know, in, in the normal environment, maybe 10% of the data is going to hit that cache anyways. That's, a, that's saving 90% of a, the transfer, right? Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. Exactly. It's my job. And the last thing we've done is, of course, writing to a single cloud target is neat, and a lot of people do that, but what if you could write to multiple cloud targets at once? Well, that would be kind of cool, right? So what if customers have a multi-cloud strategy or want to utilize a multi-cloud strategy because right. maybe they have different workloads or different uh, bargains with different cloud vendors for different right. workloads, right? Uh, they're able to do that with Actifio from a single pane of glass. Okay, wow, that's pretty cool. And then I, I think one of the things I really like about that feature, and we were talking about this earlier, is the ability to feed two clouds at the same time. Because yep. I, I see all the time where, the, that again, those egress fees, if you're moving from a, a whole data set from Amazon to Google, that could be pretty expensive, mm -hmm. obviously, and time consuming. That some companies have decided, hey, let's just feed them both at the same time because there's different things that different cloud vendors tend to specialize in almost, right? It's absolutely. Okay, absolutely. cool. And the last major thing with cloud that we've done, well, two things actually, sorry, two major things. There's okay. a lot, I've told you. So is that from a cloud DR perspective, DR orchestration, people want to be able to have one click, push button DR. And we've had the capability with our resiliency director tool to do that for a little while now. But what we've done is with 10C, extended those capabilities. Okay. So now if you want to do a one click, you set up a DR plan, push a button, we can recover those VMs in the cloud now. So okay. for VMware, for example, we can actually convert on-premises VMware VMs to AWS VMs, okay. to GCP VMs. So the customer doesn't have to worry about running the transformation. Exactly, yeah, they don't have to worry about, you know, I've got this weird configuration, how, how do I bring up this VMware environment in the cloud? I've got a database running here, how do I get it to here, right? We've got the capabilities to really help them with that. So they've got the ability now to have this one-click push-button DR for not only on-premises to cloud, Google Cloud to Google Cloud. They can do AWS to Google Cloud as well. They've got a lot of capabilities here with the simple push of the button and, for Cloud DR. And the important part is that's all orchestrated, right? Absolutely. Okay. Trying to make it as easy as possible for everyone. That makes sense, yeah. okay, cool. And the last thing with cloud that's important is that we've seen a lot of the cloud vendors, AWS, for example, come out with this native snapshot technology. Right. And what we've been able to do in 10C now is essentially leverage them and orchestrate them. So if you've got you know, AWS or, or Azure or GCP come in here and creating all these little snapshots. Well, with Actifio, we can orchestrate them and then 
protect them in the cloud as well. Now, what's neat about this is that it's agentless. So now okay. we have the ability to do agentless capture of cloud native VMs. Right. We've been able to capture them before in the past with connectors, right. but now we're able to actually use it in an agentless manner, which obviously helps significantly from an operational sure. burden and complexity and things like that. Well, yeah, because you could have a thousand VMs in, in the cloud easy, right? Easily, yeah. easily. So then, um, I want to back up one second. The, the other thing that's interesting to me about the, uh, the DR in the cloud is it seems to me that that would also set up a really nice migration tool as well. Is that true? I like where you're thinking, exactly. Okay. So if we're able to convert these on-premises or cloud VMs to another cloud native VM, think about that. Well, now you've got the data that's living here. You've got the ability to spin up the VM in its native format. Well, why not be able to just then use that as a migration tool and say, okay, well, instead of running my database that's in this VM here, let's just run it here because I've already got it converted. It's up and running. The data is being sourced from cloud too, so you're all now living in this cloud environment. So it absolutely opens the pathway to cloud migration. Yeah, and I think the other thing I really like about that is if something goes wrong where, you know, and I've seen it where particular workloads for one reason or another just don't make sense in the cloud. Mm -hmm. It also, I can now leverage your same failback capabilities to get back out of the cloud if right. I need to. Yeah, right, we have the ability to instantly you know, restore or clone the data here, but we can also bring it back to the source as well. Okay, that's awesome. Exactly. Uh, and then when we go to containers, so containers, yeah are so hot right now, they've been hot for a while. I mean, I went to the first DockerCon many years ago, for right. five years ago now. Yeah, it's been a while. And we've seen the emphasis and the excitement around containers. So, you know, with Actifio, we obviously do capture of data for backup and recovery, but we also do capture of data for something called test data management. Okay. Where you're spinning up test, test sandbox environments, whether it's on-prem in a data center or in the cloud, to do things like security patch testing, the application testing, sure. uh, things like that, right? Yeah. So what we're able to do now in Activity 10 c with containers is leverage, oh, how should I draw a container? Let's see, we'll go do a circle, a cylinder. There you go, there's your container. Okay. But essentially able to now send the data to Docker containers, okay. whether they're orchestrated by Kubernetes or not. But now what you're able to do is that customers who want to run test sandbox environments in the cloud are now able to do that in a more efficient manner from a speed as well as cost perspective. Because instead of now having to spin up all these VMs, pay for the resources, they could spin up containers in the cloud and then test their data there. That makes a lot of sense. I, I would think another attribute there is because we're always talking about the, the day that containers become sort of the, the, the norm, right? And it's a production thing. Yep. This allows you to really test it on production data, right? Exactly, right. You're using copies of production data, testing them in a container environment. That's awesome, yep. all right. And then you can spin it up and blow it away like you would do with a container as well. That's awesome. Absolutely. You know, and then last but not least, you know, from just the whole copy data perspective, we're certainly able to try and extend our leadership in that arena. Obviously, Actifio, one of the pioneers there. We've got a few other features that are kind of unique. First and foremost, we've been able to create database wizards inside of our UI okay. to give customers a really, really easy way to onboard, you know, new workloads to oh, their copy great. data solution. Sure. And we've also been able to extend our relationship with Dell EMC because we uh, can orchestrate storage snapshots. We've been able to do that for Pure in the past, as uh -huh. well as IBM. Now we can do it for Dell EMC Unity. So if okay. you have a big Dell EMC stack, you're able to utilize storage rate snapshot management with Actifio okay. to be able to send that data to a data domain, say it's like a 30-day backup, sure. or to EMC ECS, for example, Dell EMC ECS for longer term retention. For the object store. So yeah. now you've got this, if you've got this you know, investment in Dell EMC, you're able to actually extend your capabilities to a single pane of glass with Actifio to manage the copies of those data, that data as well. That's awesome, right? And I think that, let's end on that, right? That single pane of glass, because we, we, yes. we've architected all kinds of different options up here, but it's all through one thing, right? It's not 80 yeah. products to get there. It's just all one thing, it, and you just pick and select where it, it goes. It is, it's our core technology being to be able to utilize in many different manners. You know, That's it awesome. really, you know, we're not killing two birds with one stone, we're killing like four or five birds with one stone here. <laughs> Watch out for the birds. I know, right. or birds, yeah. sorry. Yeah. All right, Jason, thanks for joining us. Thanks, George, appreciate it. Sure, so there you have it. As, as we said, I mean, we've given you a lot of options here, but the, the, the great thing is it's all through one interface, and so very easy to use and get going and, and be flexible as your needs change over time. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. Have a great day.